Well, luckily we're a small group, so so I presume everybody here is going to be using the quiz, right? Um, for the assessment period that's coming up. Um, so yeah, let's let's maybe some uh, get get into it. Um, but I just want to hear what what is everybody's needs from here, maybe? Um, because we three, I mean, we can we can really get really detailed if you guys need to. Um, anybody want to grab the mic and just maybe give me an idea of what 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 you expect? What do you need from the session? Miranda? Yeah, I can. I, I can just. Um, yeah. For me, because um, this season we are not doing any assessments, and most of most of our assessments um, are manuals oh. because they, su they submit their assignments and we we assess them and we send them back. I think I'm um, okay. I'm just here to check and also to to, oh. to learn uh, in case okay, we cool. we we think of migrating to this portal. Yeah, yeah. Um, just here to okay, to cool. spy. To spy, awesome, that's yes. perfect. I love spy, so it's great. Thank cool, you. guys, uh, Stanley, Jan, any, any expressing needs that you guys have or any questions that we can maybe start by focusing on? Let me just close my email because it'll go drive us all mad. No, good. Okay, so so today we we really just chatting about, about the quiz and, and how to use how to use and how to set up the quiz um, for, for online assessment. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're gonna be talking more about the settings itself. Um, but if you have any questions, just, you know, put up your hand and we can, we can, uh, we can stop and we can, we can talk about it. So first, first space first, we've, we've put down um, a, a set of resources that we sent out via top list and also via HODs and stuff um, around essentials for online assessment. Um, so regardless if you're using the quiz or anything else, I just wanna remind everybody, you know, first step is to, to always um, put in a, an, an enrollment key on your, on your course page. Um, at this stage, you shouldn't be getting any new students signing up to your course page. So just close that off <clears throat> so that uh, we prevent students from being uh, sneaky and getting their friends to enroll on a course and and uh, get 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 access to your quiz. Um, but also just maybe check that you have the registered students on your course page. Um, so I'm just going to reiterate that. It's just to make sure that we protect the integrity of our assessment to the best that we can. Um, we don't have uh, uh, turn it in for, for a quiz, so that's not um, applicable. Um, and also just, just general stuff before we, 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 we get into to the nitty gritty of anything, we just always need to make sure, <coughs> sorry, make sure that, um, that, that we, we are ready to assist students um, when they start an assessment. Um, We've, uh, we've gotten some feedback from the first round of assessments for honors groups and stuff from education and further. And that's the first thing that they highlight is just be, be, a, be around for that time when an assessment starts and, and when it ends. Um, and just check periodically how, on whatever way you communicate with your students, be it WhatsApp or with email or whatever configuration you have for your course. So just be around, and if there's an issue um, with anything, um, we put together some some resources for for to guide students um, on how to do that or to 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 check that your settings are correct. Um, so just keep that in mind, and if there's an issue, please contact Etic. Um, but instead of flood, flooding us with hundreds of students, it would be better if we have one, one line of communication. Um, it would just make it easier. Um, and also to bear in mind, if there is an issue and students can't contact you uh, and they contact EdTech, we don't do any um, adjustments of time and stuff like that. We will revert back to the lecturer 
Um, okay, and uh, most important, please don't delete any of the assessments that you are doing. Um, we can only retrieve something from, from our, our recycle bin for seven days. After that, it is gone forever ever into the ether and we will never get it back. Um, so that's just very important. Okay, any questions or any concerns around these issues from anyone? All good, clear as mud. Right. <clears throat> um, I thought I heard someone now, okay. So yeah, that's just something to keep in the back of our minds. Um, we have also put together a couple of guides here that you can share with your students if you're going to be using a quiz. <clears throat> sorry, there's a little how-to document that, sorry, <coughs> a little how-to document on, uh, on what they are going to see from the student side um, based on the settings that we suggest that you use. So it will take them through all the steps of, of submitting a quiz and even up to the step to see that I've submitted correctly. Um, so that guide is there and you can obviously edit it if we put it up on a word, word format. Um, so yeah, so communication is also key. The, it, it really is going to, to, to affect the success of your quiz and especially with a quiz because they're so rigid um, <clears throat> we need to communicate that very early on. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about this. I think I've got some dust in the air here. Okay, and uh, then we'll talk about what to do after assessments once, once we finish setting up a quiz. Uh, no questions up to this point? Awesome. Okay, let's then maybe to talk through setting up a, a quiz and and what and why do we should we worry about certain set settings. So what we've seen consistently throughout throughout the year and through through the last semester is that that certain certain settings just confuse students and confuse um, our lecturing colleagues as well and. It's, it's justified because if we don't know it, we don't know it. Um, I'm just looking for, no, not this page. So there is some stuff that we have to consider. Um, let's almost start a new quiz. Okay, so like setting up anything on, on Are You Connected, it's, 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 it's always a two-step process with a quiz. We have to name it. Um, I'm going to call this Test Quiz 1. Ugh. Um, so that, that's going to be the name, and that creates a category in, in, in the gradebook as well. So when I said communication is key, I would always use the description page to give give students all the direction and support that they need. The quiz will open at eight o'clock on Monday and it will close at five o'clock on Monday, um, meaning you've got so many hours, there are so many questions. And if there's any other time limitations on the attempt, that's what you'll put in the space here. So it's always good to, to, to guide your students here. Um, it's very important because it just, just takes away the, the anxiety that they have around assessment. Okay, when we move to timing, and these are the most important one, is if we have a, a time limit, we need to just enable that. I'm going to do stuff like this is a quiz for tomorrow, and I want my quiz to open up at two o'clock, and I want it to close at five o'clock. So I've enabled this. What this means is that no student can access the quiz before this time and nobody can access it after this time. I can also say, give my students a time limit of 60 minutes. So they have 60 minutes to complete the quiz, if we put it down like that, within this three hour period. So when they do it, it doesn't matter, but they've got 60 minutes to complete this test. Okay. 
Now the big one, and this is the one that, as I say, we've got so many tickets that come through the system because we're selecting a different option. So if we go with the stock standard, attempts must be submitted before time, time expires or they're not counted. Means that if a student gets to minute 59 and they don't hit save and submit, so it's two clicks that I have to do before it hits 60 minutes, it, it would actually not, it would actually not um, submit their they retain. That means they get zero, even if they completed the entire test. Um, so, so yeah, so that's 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 the big one here. So we suggest that you always use open attempts are submitted automatically. Why? Because if a, if a student gets to minute sixty, they submit, they don't click submit. As long as it's open the system will submit automatically and there's nothing for you to worry about. Um, you can always check, but there's nothing for you to worry about. And the same with the grace period. Um, if you have a grace period, if I select that option, it, you need to select how big is this grace period. The problem again is if students don't click that they have submitted and, and, and final submitted, this, this lays in, in purgatory. So, It'll show an attempt, but the, it'll, it'll show no grade. So that's a big problem. Um, and of course, when it gets to exams, we all have to move quite rapidly. So I always suggest make your life as easy as you can. All right. Grade is, is also another important one is if you are using your grade book, I've set up my grade book so I can say I want this to contribute to, to a quiz category. Um, but I don't want unlimited attempts. That means students can try this as many times as they want. We only want one attempt. So this one is very important because if you don't select this, this becomes problematic. Um, but you also get different options if you choose one, two, or three, which grade is the one that's going to count. Um, but obviously, in most cases, we'll only have one, especially for assessment. Neil? Can I interrupt yes. you quickly? Please do. Uh, I'm a student. I lose connection. Is my attempt gone? My one attempt? No, it's out, not. You come back in. No, no. So, so the quiz and and this this is going to tie into to the layout. All right. Um, the quiz is it runs automatically. So I log into Are You Connected? I start my attempt, and I get. I've said 60 minutes, so I get to minute 30 and all of a sudden I lose connection. So at minute 30, the clock is still going to run. Students will just have to go back and log back in. But if that, if I drop off at minute 30 and I, it takes me five minutes to get back at 35, I will only have that 15 minutes left. Oh, well, 25 minutes left because that five minutes, does the clock doesn't stop running. But everything I've attempted would be saved on the system, depending on what we do here. So the system, once I open up the quiz and I start answering the questions, um, every time I click to the next page, that is saved on the system. It's saved as a draft. Now, what some of our colleagues are doing is saying, never all questions on one page. And they put 50 questions on one page. Now, what that does to the system is, it number one takes longer for the page to load for a student with a slower connection. So it's actually to, it's actually a barrier for those students. Um, and if I, let's say I wanna do it five questions on a page, I actually prefer to just say every question. So, so that I know as students complete a question, it actually saves that as a draft. So if I get kicked out and I'm at question 10 of 20 at 30 minutes, when I come back, I know everything that I've answered up to that point and click next page is saved as a draft on the machine. Yeah, and another thing also, I think, you know, imagine a student using a phone and they're in an area where the internet's not very reliable. 
So at least when yes. they go back, then they can go back to their, all they, what they have done so far is saved, right, Neil? Yes, yeah, yeah. So every, everything would be saved, um, especially in, in, in weaker connections. And that's what you, that's what, what, what this layout function would, 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 would give us as a benefit. And I mean, it doesn't mean that students would go question one, two, three, ten, and then they're done. This is the navigation method. So yeah, the, if I set it as free, I can go freely move to question one to question 10 back and forth. If I hit sequential, that means students will have to go sequentially through them and they can't put the page back. So it's as much as some students don't like this, it is still a another way for them to to, 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 we're actually supporting them without them knowing. So um, that's the big, the big session. Oh, the big, the big, big idea around around uh, the layout. Does that answer your question, Nicola? Yes, perfectly. Thanks, okay, Neil. Cool. Awesome. All right, and then we've also got question behavior. So. So what we do is when we set up our question, uh, let's say we've got, is the sky, what color is the sky? Then I've got yellow, purple, orange, blue, okay? If we say shuffle within question, it's going to shuffle those options. So if I had blue at the end, it might be blue as option B for, for one of us. Blue might be option D for some of us. It's just going to jumble that up. Now that's important to know, especially if you're going to be using questions like uh, which option is best describes the color of the sky, uh, blue, um, purple, um, the color of sky has no color, and C, and, and the last option could be uh, A and, and, and C. So, you know, so you need to remember that for those type of questions. It's just something that we need to know about. Um, and also how questions behave. So we, we, we'd rather say, keep it on, on deferred feedback, because that means you, you can set when students um, get feedback from, from, from the questions. Um, and this is where it becomes important. So if we have deferred feedback, you can decide what students can see immediately after the attempt while this quiz is still open and then after it is closed. So for an assessment, you would probably have it set up something like this because you don't want students to see their mark just yet. Um, okay, then appearance, appearance again. Can I just go back to the shuffle? Sure. So sure. also why you shuffle, <laughs> in some cases, Students are very good with WhatsApping each other and say, oh, what's your answer for number one? And it's yeah. A. <laughs> um, so maybe you want to just say questions are shuffled or, you know, in a heads yeah. up, you can't, you can't cheat so easily. Yeah. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. You just let them go on by, by their own way. Hopefully they'll figure it out themselves if they're the nefarious student. Because otherwise you're just going to arm them with uh, a way to circumvent what you try. So I wouldn't even tell them that the, the answers are shuffled. I just let them go um, by themselves. So if I set up a randomized quiz and I WhatsApp Nicola, what's your answer question one? And you say C, we might get two different questions. So hopefully that would be enough of a deterrent, but I wouldn't even tell them that it's shuffled. I don't know. Nicola. Or do you, do you say no. yes? No, I think you're right there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't tell them that. They need to focus on the question and answer what, what's in front of them. So for those who do that, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, okay, then we've got appearance. Uh, under appearance, we've got um, use a picture. I always say put no image because um, it just makes it easier for, for the system to load. If I say small or large image, um, we'll go into a student view of a, of a quiz just now, then it's actually gonna load the picture. Now, every picture we load is, is more data that it needs to take to load the page. 
And same with grade marks. I mean, if you've got a question that like you can get an absolute number of one you need, no animals in that. Um, and the same same with here. If if you don't need decimals, then you don't have to to do that. Um, all right. Then we've also got extra restrictions. Um, we can put in a password um, that students need to have to enter the quiz. Um, if that's something that you require. Um, this is a possibility, but it's not something that's easily doable when people are remote, but only works um, when we have people writing in one computer lab, then we can actually restrict uh, a network address to a specific space. Um, browser security is also something that, that we can put in place, um, but nothing is, is, is perfect. What this means is um, your browser would pop up out, out of Are You Connected? It will open up its own browser and there are some security um, features in that. Um, so yeah, uh, this is for the app, but we don't wanna put that down for now. Okay, then we also have feedback, but this is just feedback that we can give a student if they get a hundred. So, oh, well done. Yes, go for it. So do you, um, with that little browser pop-up thingy, um, if you know that oh. a lot of students are using the app, are you recommending that people don't use that pop-up? Um, no, the, the pop-up would, would, would open on any, any, any browser. Um, all that the browser does is it, it, it should not allow you to do a screen capture, like a print screen, um, and to copy the text so that you can't go onto the website and do this, you know? And I wonder if it also applies to phones. It would apply to phones as well, because that it's, yeah. it's a JavaScript security, so it just makes okay. this not, not grabbable. Um, oh. And in some browsers, you won't be able to to do a screen screenshot <clears throat> like what I'm doing now. So I've created a screenshot of of what we have. So in some browsers, but it's not mm. not always foolproof on all of them. Okay, I'm yeah. just oh, sorry if I'm interrupting. I'm just asking things no, I think no, people no. might might want yeah. to be thinking of asking. Yes, no, ask ask away, ask away. Okay. Uh, overall feedback, as I say, that's just, oh, well done, you've gotten 100%. Um, common module settings, <clears throat> here we can say, you know, show on course, hide from students, and we've also added another one, make available but not shown on course page. So what this enables you to do is if I select this, on this page, students won't be able to see this link. But if I email them the link, and I, what I mean by the link is, is, is the URL. Once I go into this quiz and I email this URL, students will be able to complete the quiz, but they won't see it on the course page. So it's just something that's, that's useful. In some instances, we, are, we have, um, that I've been discussing with lecturers who have um, different papers that they, are distributing to, to students. Um, they are setting up four quizzes and we will email um, a test to a certain group of students and this test to a certain group of students. Um, so that, you know, instead of going randomizing, he's got four, di four different, very similar tests because um, it's a math problem, it's still, the same amount of complexity. It's just the one, this one problem is from, from one approach and the problem is from another approach. I don't know. Um, but it's all the same difficulty test. And you'll email that to, to certain groups and say, you need to complete this exam. Here is your exam. Here is your exam. Um, and is that a strategy that that particular lecturer used to circumvent cheating? Yes, yeah. So, so we we suspected that certain students are working together because um, their answers come out very similarly. Um, so, in this this test, we we actually 
split the people who we thought was very close to each other. Um, so hence uh, there's four that we thought were working together um, and maybe a bit more. Um, so they are being split up so that they each have actually different problems. So when they do get it and they want to work together, they actually can't because it's different problems. So different values to the same problem rather. So for the, it will be about getting to the right method. So, so just another way that, that, that's interesting to get around that. Um, another one that that popped up is 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 uh, well. Before I move on, anybody have any questions around this? Cool. There is mud. So groups, Neil. Groups is yeah. that groups of particular? Say you have tut groups and people say I'm doing marking tut one and tut two. Yeah, so, so, so group mode is if, if you have set up a quiz and you only want a specific group to do it, um, you can separate it by groups. But if I put visible groups, um, I, I'll be able to, when I get into my results, you know, select one group to, to view all the results, select another group to view all the results. So it would be one way of, of just sorting the, the entire class list. If that makes sense. So it just makes groups available on the course by, uh, on the on the quiz. But in this case, it's not gonna do anything to the quiz. It's not gonna limit people to the quiz. Mm, okay. Yeah. So yes. that depends on people having groups set up already. Yes, yeah, you must have groups set up already. So. I think in this case, yes, I've got groups set up. So I can, for instance, now restrict access to this quiz to a certain group. So if I want to do that, I can say add restriction and click on group. And then I can choose a group that I want to restrict. So let's say I only want group one to be able to do this, this quiz, all right? Let me just check, I think I set it up for two to five. So, I've got it, uh, group one can do this only, but I can also restrict date. So let's say I want this link to only appear on Are You Connected tomorrow at five to two, All right? So 13.55, so at 13.55, this will pop up. Students won't see it at the moment. Um, actually, this is gonna work against it. Um, let's say I'm just going to say show on course page, so it's church, it will be available. It will be available at 155, and then I'm going to add another date. And here I'm going to click until tomorrow at 15. Uh, well, we could, it doesn't really matter. We add, add another date, uh, another extra minutes here because our quiz is going to close at five o'clock on the dot. So if we're in this space, it doesn't matter, but it, it at 17.05, this link will disappear as well. So as we have it set up, only group one can see this. They'll see it from five to one, five to two till five past five. Okay, then we also have activity completion. If we want to see how students are faring and what they are completing, we can we can activate that. But I don't think that really matters for for assessment. Um, so the the other three we don't really use. Okay, anything about the any questions about setting up or anything that's not clear? Anything that you might want to do, um, you can ask now. Clear as mud. Fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> so now we've set up our quiz. We built the shell. We now need to, to actually put something in it. So here is my quiz. 
I need to go back into that quiz. Sorry, before I just want to show you. So this quiz that we set up now, you'll see here, not available and belong to group one. So you need to be in group one. It is after 1.55 p.m. and it is before 5.05. So this actually tells you, and students will see this, Students will actually see this on the course page. They'll see this link, but it's not clickable unless they belong to one and, and it's between those times. Okay. So it actually takes away some of the having to set up stuff and actually to remove it. Okay, so now we're gonna set, set up some questions in our quiz. Um, I want, just want to say we have got some resources. We can do bulk uploads. Um, so if you have a whole bunch of questions, there is a format that you can put in a Word document and you can do a bulk upload. Um, that's going to save you a lot of time. Unfortunately, it only does true and false questions and multiple choice. But it is a real time saver. Okay, um, so now we've got our or quiz and we're actually going to start adding a question or two. So just just before I continue, here you already see there's something that's called the maximum grade. At the moment, this thing thinks it counts out of 10, but it is something that we can just adjust. Um, so add a new question because we're not have we not have a we don't have a question bank set up. I'm just going to add one quick question here. So overall, we've got multiple choice. We've got true, false. Um, short answers are a bit more complex because it's it's caps lock sensitive and stuff like that. If you want to use that, maybe just let me, let me know. Numerical is is very straightforward. Um, same as calculated. It'll actually tell you exactly. Um, um, if you're right or wrong, because there's an absolute right or wrong answer. You can also add in small essays. Um, if you are going to use go essay route, I would really suggest you rather, you rather use assignment um, than a quiz. There's also matching. Matching is maybe a bit difficult. The only reason why I say that is students tend to work on, on devices that that have restrictions. So if you are using a cell phone, this doesn't really display as well and the same as this random short answer matching. It, it, it comes in, in little drop down boxes and it's super confusing. Um, the same with the embedded answers. You can you can ask for certain words, but again it depends on the device. If you are into coding, we've just launched this one, Code Runner, as well. Um, so yeah, and uh, so just for folks yeah. who are not into coding <laughs> or not sure what yeah. you mean by that, maybe you want to just explain. Um, so so literally, Code Runner is you can you can set up a Code Runner question, um, and you can put in a certain program code. So let's say you want to write something that's going to open up a Word document and and it's going to take data from one space and into the next and put it into a next one. You give it the, the, the right answer and you send out the, the question to the students and they actually write the code that you need and they upload it to Code Runner and the system would actually check if the code will work. Okay, so that is in really the case where answers are truth. code. So that's like computer yes, science. Yeah, literally right? when it's coding. Yeah, it's like computer science or any, any other form of programming that you do. Code run is an excellent solution. Um, and we're setting, we're setting up a local server and stuff like that. So it's really, really worth it. Um, the same with the drag and drop questions. I would also say try and stay away from them, especially for students completing their assignment on a on a phone, it, it can be very restrictive. Okay, 
So I'm just going to do the simplest of all questions quickly. Just talk yeah, to I just want to Neil. Yeah. Um, so the biggest one I, I know is that when people have got one answer questions, and if it's not spelt correctly, okay. you know, it's, it's actually got to be a one word yes. one. And I think that yeah. one's one that got people stumped the most. Yeah, yeah short, so answer. short so, answer. So yeah, be careful of short answer. I mean, short answer is literally one word and the spelling and whatever has to match, correct? Yeah. So I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start a short answer. Um, and why I say a short answer is, is, is complex. I'm just not going to put anything in. But when it gets to this you, case, you can say it's not important. But it, you need to give it answer one. So let's say our answer is... Oof, um is let me think of a of a of one um uh oh man i'm thinking of what's a word that's got different spelling uh british english versus u.s english can somebody give me an example because all of a sudden i hit blank and a lot color color color, color yeah. All right. So color could be this way, and you need to say 100%. Then you can go color, and that needs to be 100%. Then you, then you need to give it a, this is what it calls a wild card um, color. So now it's going to allow for, for um, um, uppercase or lowercase, any letter here with the, that combination. So you would have to actually do the same thing for each different way of spelling, spelling something. Um, so by the time you finish, you're going to have about 15 or 18. If you don't have 18 options, it's probably not going to work already. Um, so you actually need to think about wild cards and these pluses and, and everything's got a meaning to it. So that's why I say it's a very difficult one to program. Um, and uh, I've done it successfully a couple of times, but it, oh, it was trial and error all the way. And we had to go through manual marking and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't think anybody um, would like to go through that whole drama. Um, if you really want to, maybe let me know and we can, we can have a discussion about it. But let's quickly jump jump through here because Mamza has asked a very good question in the in the in the chat, and that's something I would really like to get to as well. So let's just say to start off with, we've got categories on 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 our pages. So my course is Sanford 2020 NK. So I've got a default. I've already have another test set up with 40 questions. So if I Add to default, it's just going to keep on adding to the default category, or I can create a new category and say exam and just upload there. But let's say I'm going to give this question name, I'm going to put it to default, I'm going to call it one. This is arbitrary, this you can do whatever you'd like, as long as you know what, what the question is, is called. So I'm going to put in question, what color is the sky? Um, you can give it a default mark weighting. General feedback is useful if informative assessment. Summative, we, we might want to not give in any, any of that. Um, then this is an important one because we've got different types of questions. So, so remember, as I said, we, we can have the option to say there's one absolute right answer or it could be a couple. But let's let's keep you know let's let's do multiple answers just so that you see the logic and you can choose what type of numbering you would like. So let's go blue. Oh. Blue. Blue is one hundred percent correct. Hopefully. So I just want to check something. Uh, yeah. Remember? Yeah, I said if I didn't say it, this this you can tick or untick. So if, my, if I had one answer only and my options would be 
both A and B or both C and D, then I would untick me this because otherwise it's going to shuffle all the choices within within the, the, the option. And remember when we set up um, the first, the, the, when we set up the quiz, we also had this, the option to say shuffle. If shuffle is unticked here, it, the quiz won't shuffle the answers. It will only shuffle if, if shuffle is ticked. Okay, so we've got blue, we've got red, that none is obviously what the, that one is hopefully. We've got uh, uh, green and let's say purple is plausible. All right. So let's say purple is plausible. Now what I've done here is I've actually made a mistake. So let's say my question counts one and a student chooses, because I've now say multiple answers are allowed. If a student now chooses this, they're going to get one mark for this one and they're going to get one mark for purple. So if, we, if I wanted combined that both of them contribute one mark, I have to change the grade to 50%. So now if a student comes in and they only choose option one, they're going to get a half a mark. And if they, go, if they choose purple and, uh, well, option one and four, then they'll get one full mark. So that's how you get half marks in. But let's not complicate our own life. Let's just say we're going to go for one, one answer only. I just wanted to show you the logic. Whoop. Okay. When you're done, you say save changes. All right. So that's the one type of question um, that's made. Sorry, making questions takes a bit longer. So we've got one, 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 one here. We can also preview our quiz, which is under administration. Um, you can say start attempt. And this is exactly what students would see. This looks no different, except that they won't have administration like we have here. They have it, but it's, it's minimized and they've got one option underneath it. So here my timer is starting. It's, it's got, I've got one hour, the hour clock is counting down. Here is my questions and, you know, blue is then correct. So as you remember, as I said, it, it shuffles. We had blue as A. We've got blue in the right career, right space. You can also, as a lecturer from this space, go and edit a question. If something's wrong with this question, you can click this one. It'll open up this page. And you can actually edit your question. So there's a space for us to, to actually just do that. Um, finish attempt. And this is exactly what students would see. Question answered, return to attempt, so they can actually go back or click submit all and finish, submit all and finish. <clears throat> and there's, a, there's the attempt that they would see. So if we put in deferred feedback, the mark and all of that stuff while the quiz is still open, you would see all of it that in this space. You can say finish ready. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Cool. Any questions about this one? I'm um, not a question, but I think just more of a comment that quiz is mm. quite time consuming to set up and it is quite a commitment. Um, does require very like knowing about the different question types and how they behave. Um, and I think, you know, in your strategy of showing, you know, don't just set it up, have a look at the preview, see how it would behave if you yeah. were a student. Yes. Um, I think that's no, really definitely. good advice. Mm, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, but I think Mamza's question, we should, that's really important. Yes. And we yeah. get that. I've actually got one now from a lecturer about not a quiz specifically, but assignment. Um, so yeah, let's do that one. Okay, cool. So let me let's let's do that one here, and then I will 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 go to the 
um, let's not go to another one. So here I've got somebody, one with an attempt to reading. So <clears throat> before I get you your mums out, I'm going to just say once once a quiz is completed, the only thing that we have to check as 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 like is that everybody submitted. So if you if you used any option except auto auto submit, um, if you had any times like that or anything that says give them a session or they need to click. This is the space that you need to check because it will tell you review attempt, but it will give you no mark. It will be a dash and it will tell you how long the student took. So if the students didn't click it incorrectly, this is where you'll see it. Um, so it's just something that you have to check after every exam um, just to make sure you've captured all of the, the marks that, that needs to be there. If, if this student did not submit correctly and there's a dash and in, in, in if the student gets zero, it'll actually put down zero. But if, if, the, if it's a dash, that means there's a problem. All you need to do in that case is email this link to ATIC and, and we, will, um, we will help you to get the submission done for the student. Don't have to involve the student, we will just make it happen. Unfortunately, it's just something that we can do, and, and unfortunately, it's not one of those bad things of interest. Yeah, and just just a heads up. So what happens is people see a dash, and then they think, "Oh, I did not write." When the student yeah. contacts you, and the student said, "Well, actually, I did write. Um, yes. Why is it not showing?" And that's the yeah. cases where we go in, um, and often yeah. that is because of people's settings for the quiz. Yeah. Right, Neil. Yes, half the, half the time it's just because we we say give give students concession so that they can click submit. Or when you saw I previewed the the quiz, there's I need to click submit. Then the system gives me a space to review. I need to click submit again, and then that third one students tend to forget about the third click. So they don't click that. And if the system is set that if I don't say submit before the time expires, that whole attempt is then not counted so so that's that's the problem in, in in a lot of those cases so if there's a dash um but there is an attempt like started and completed please just pop us a mail at edtech and we will we will um help you through that process yeah so can and you take us back and take us yeah. back and show where that setting lives which setting is that oh to get yeah. to the results no, no, the one where you people um, don't uh, click submit. So there's an option when you set it up, students have to click submit. Sure, I can do that. Because um... I know sometimes we go a little fast and yeah. then, you know, what we said 20 minutes ago, maybe you don't remember. No, yeah, it's, it's forgotten. So that's, that's under timing. So open attempts are submitted automatically. So what I did in this that this this quiz that I set up, I actually logged in as a student, because the student is me, and I completed the, all the questions, and I just left left it and let the timer run out. So my attempt was open and it submitted automatically, so everything works. But if you select, there's a grace period, or if you say attempts must be submitted before the time expires, that's when it runs into issues. Um, and let me go to the preview. That's when you run into issues. So yeah, and I think we think oh, you see grace period and you think, oh, that's nice, you know, that's being yeah. flexible and accommodating. Yes. And you select that one, yeah. but then it causes issues. Yes. So so let me just stick through. Oh, I don't have to. I can say finish attempt, right? And this is where students get stuck. So so they click finish attempt. They don't read and see, well, you know, my, I'm not done because it says return to attempt. They click this one. And instead of clicking this last one, they, they end up closing that. So what has happened now is my, 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 my quiz has been attempted, but I won't, it, won't, um, it won't be captured. And mine here won't be captured because I'm not a, not logged in as a student. So, in effect, we're actually 
setting up our students here to not fail, but to possibly fail. Young, you've got your hand, hand up. Hi, yeah, Neil. Uh, Neil, I just want to ask, uh, um, and it's a specific situation that, that happened in a very big class. Um, can you have, it, it, it's, it, was, it, it, it relates to a student who had extra time and then required 15 minutes more in the hour. Now, can you set it up automatically for individual students that they will have that, or must you do it manually on the day while they're writing? No. No, we can we can actually do that before the before the time, and that's exactly what Mamza's question is uh, is about as well. So let's say we want to give a student extra time on this quiz. All right, quiz one, the one that we just set up. Here we can go to user override. If we click that under administration, you're going to get to a page like this, and we're going to say add user override. It's going to give you an option to search for a student. So let's say we want to give this student a bit of extra time because he's super stressed. Um, we can override the start and finish time. So you yeah, think about when you have students who, who needs to write a second opportunity and you need to use the same exam, you can actually adjust this. So let's say Neil needs to write today because he's flying to wherever. Um, I can override, make the, the, the test earlier. I can adjust the, the time limit. So because he's a stressed guy, we're going to give him instead of an hour, we're going to go minutes, but we need to give him an hour is 60. Let's say he gets 10 minutes per the hour. That would make it 70 minutes. So in this case, when this user, all right, logs into the system, they'll actually see this quiz already, all right, based on the time that we want them to. But in their attempt, because we put down a 60 minute time limit, they're actually gonna have extra time. But let's say, let's say your, your time for the main quiz was set to an hour for duration, but also here you've got an hour, right? For this one user, you're going to be rather be safe than sorry, make that 70 minutes as well. So if this, if the open and close time of the quiz corresponds to the time limit, then just add the time limit there as well. Once you hit save, it'll actually take you to, to, to a page and you'll see this user can open the quiz on this day between this and that time and they've got a time limit of one hour and 10 minutes. So you can actually do that and you can do it way before the, before the time. It doesn't have to happen the day of. Um, so if I set up a quiz for for the end of November, I can already upload all of these overrides. So this student, it, there won't be any difference in their experience. Yeah, so this is what some, something you do, you can do it before. Yeah. yeah. Or you can do it afterwards and they will both yeah. be the same process, correct? Yeah, yes, exactly. So so let's say now, uh, now we are in, in February, and we've got a student that needs to write. I don't know. I, could, I always forget what is that word. The word, and I hope I'm using it right because I'm, you know, I'm still an infant in, in that at roads speak sometimes. Uh, that or ergatat or argatat. What's that? Yeah, I also don't know agritat yeah. or something. But agritat, it's kind of like that's it. I don't know what the difference is between that and the sup. So if anyone yes. can clarify for us, that'll yeah. be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so, ooh, sorry. So let's say I'm in that space and I need to open up this quiz for another student that needs to write it. Um, uh, oh, no, not. For this student, let's say this student needs to write it in February uh, or, or second up, up start, I think eight and nine February. So I can move this up to right up to February. Oh. February, and I can adjust the time 
I can give this person an, 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 an extra time and everything, and I can just say save. The only thing is you have to do them individually. So you can't bulk upload these, unfortunately. And if, if you need to go and edit them, you can actually just go to the gear and you can adjust the time and date. You don't have to delete them. So let's say, oh, I made a mistake. This must still be on the sixth. Um, you can just save. If you need to add another one, you say save and enter another override. Um, as a way around, Neil, mm. is there no way you can have a group of students? So say you get back, you know, say yes. 20, 20 of your students don't write and you don't want to do this 20 times. Yes. Uh, then, you can, and yeah. then can you create a group or yes. do you just copy that assignment and put only those students in it? You can do, you can do that as well. So, so you actually have a couple of options if, if you... If you would like to, you can just duplicate the quiz um, and you can give it give it over. Um, well, reopen it for those students only. Um, or you can put all of the students in a group on Are You Connected? And you can say add a group override. And here it will tell you which group. So let's say I've made group two is my, my sub or ergotat people or whatever that word is. And we want them to write on Valentine's Day. Um, then it's as simple as that. Shifting it into 2021. And you say save. So anybody who is in group two, all right, would have access to that. And you can check the, the group as well. Just by clicking there, you'll see there's only one, there's two people in group two. So these two people would have access to to that that uh, to this uh, quiz at hmm. that time. Okay. Yeah. Because I think that's going to become really important come February, January, whenever yes. these things happen. And exactly. you know, there might be people in courses who think, you know, oh, I'd have to do this. I've got thirty students or however many. Um, so that really helps. I see, uh, I think Jan put his, or someone put up their hand. Uh, Mums also put up her hand. And I saw, was it Jan that also, but I think let's give Mums a hand over to Mums and then. Yes. Hi, hi, uh, Nicole and Neil and everyone. Um, whilst we're still here, Neil, um, I was actually wondering, because you were saying we could create a new group on Are You Connected for the group of students that you want to use the override for? Yes. And say, for an example, I've got students who have to write now a test, maybe five who didn't write my test, but now they have to write a new test. But they, they, they are already, they, they exist as, as participants in the course on one of the yes. courses. So can I just go into the course and select their names, copy and paste into this or? or, or... Yes, you, you can. You can say so not into the group, but let's say you want to create a group. If you go to administration, users, below that is groups. Okay. So you can, can go to groups. It's going to open up a page that looks like this. And we're uh -huh. going to say, create a new group. And then you can call it, you know, your sub or, yeah. or whatever group you would like to call it. You say, save changes. Mm -hmm. And then you can just say add or remove users. And then it's going to give you a list of all the students in that in this course. Now, obviously, I don't have many. But if I start typing, you'll see it actually filters them out. So, so as you type here, you can just say that click that one. I want to put this this student into that group. You say add shift that student over to that group okay. the same yeah the same with the next ones once you start typing half the time if you start typing their first name they will really start popping up and you just say add until you've got everybody in that group and you say back to groups okay thanks yeah <laughs> great 
we, we're going to try and make this easier. We, we're looking at another option for groups to, to, to help make groups easier. Um, but yeah, I mean, now I've got that one group. It's got two students in it. If I go back to my overrides, all right, and I just refresh my page. I can say I, this is the group that I was supposed to select. If I go into settings, I can now, oh, no, you can't change the group once they've made. Sorry, so let's say, let's say we want to add another, another override. We can delete an override as well. We can now just select the subgroup and add in the parameters that we want here. So that way it's very easy to, to pull them together very quickly. Cool. I hope that makes it easier, Mamza. And yes, yes, too. it does, Neil. It, it actually okay, looks great. much easier than I thought. <laughs> yes, no, it really is a lot easier. Um, so it, I think it's just going to help. It's really yeah. just going to help um, to 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 do these things a little little a little mm -hmm. more painless. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thank you. Guys, Leisure. Any other questions or anything around the quiz or your assessment or anything like that? No doubt. That's awesome. Great. So you're awesome. Good luck for, for, for any quizzes. Next week we're doing one on the assignment next week, Tuesday. Um, and then we can just talk talk through the assignment a bit more. Um, yeah. Luckily, the assignment's easy to set up, and it's really really quick. So, yeah. Much less, e much much easier than quiz. <laughs> yes, yeah, much 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 less complicated. So, yeah. also one last thing that I will mention okay. though is that um, something that's come up uh, when you can't have turn it in in a quiz, but you can have it in assignment. Yes. So just bear in mind if you would like to use a similar, you know, a text matching tool, um, particularly if students are actually submitting long, longer answers with a couple of sentences, then actually assignment might be a better route to go. Yes, definitely, definitely it would be much more appropriate for what 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 you would like to achieve in that one. So yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today, colleagues. Yeah. And as Neil Thank said, good so luck much. with your with your assessments. Yeah. Um, the final push. And then we can all go on holiday, hopefully. <laughs> we remain hopeful. <laughs> yes, me and me, me and Leander were talking about how we want to do absolutely nothing after this year <laughs> ends. Because it's like the long, 2020 has been the longest decade of my life. <laughs> I still have a century in November, so wait. Oh, man. You're breaking me. You're breaking me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Thanks so much. Bye. Have cheers. Go well, Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. Pleasure. Cheers. And bye. Jeez, I'll say awesome.